We are just about through uh, the round of pail feeding. After the pail feeding, we will feed these hives with uh, light open feed uh, from now till middle of October uh, to top them right up. Um, I run the luxury of managing my apiary in an area of 200 square miles where it's just my bees. I'll keep the pails on apiaries that are closer to neighbors. I don't want to uh, influence any problems with robbing between uh, my hives and my neighbors' hives, so I'm very conscious about that. Uh, throughout the fall, I keep a close attention uh, to mite counts. I've done mite counts end of August, and from those counts, I've decided whether or not I was gonna do a fall treatment. My counts were zero, so uh, I'm not doing any of that but I will be doing uh, an oxalic acid treatment in um, end of October when the hives are broodless, just before I put them inside for winter. But I like to keep tabs in my hives just so I know what's going on, so I do mite washes. And I would recommend that to anybody who is looking after bees, looking after mites is one of the most important things you have to do. You have to know your mites. And if you don't know what your mite counts are, then you run a big risk of losing hives. So that's very important. I'll show you what I do. I go through the yards and I randomly pick six uh, hives. I tip them back and I take a small sample uh, and I'll wash them. And whatever you do, just make sure your, your tests are consistent uh, to the next so you can form some kind of data and help you measure what's going on. So I'm gonna quickly show you what I do. So I've randomly selected five colonies here. It's really important to uh, take this sampling random. You don't want to be biased on your measurements. I made this little uh, bee sucker, I call it. Randy Oliver uh, made one up for his sampling for Nozema and such, and I find it really handy to take samples from beehives. This is a little vacuum, and it's got a, some alcohol in the bottom and that little canister. So I just go and take a sample, and what I do, um, this is what I do. I go, I tip the hives back, and I take a sample from the uh, the bottom of the cluster of the hive, right next to the brood nest, right in the center. That's what I do. So I just come in and I like to get it as close to the brood nest as I can. The preferably way it would be to pull those brood frames out, right? But uh, that's a lot of work. So I find that this gives me a real good an idea of what's going on. It's really consistent, and that's what we're looking for, is consistency in our sampling. I don't want to take the queen with me. She's not likely hanging on the bottom. I'm gonna go from hive to hive. It's quicker when you have someone helping you do this. in pretty good shape. So I got a nice little sample there of bees, so I'm gonna wash them. So I'll take a sample <clears throat> from every yard and I'll wash them separately uh, just to get an idea of, of what yards are problems and and then I put everything together uh, into one sample at the end. Um, what I do is I just simply shake them for about five minutes or whatever, swiv swish them around and then Separate the uh, bees. Oops, the screen. <laughs> Separate the bees and the mites, and then from the bottom here, you uh, you count the mite to the bottom, and I'm counting one mite out of that wash. Uh, roughly a hundred bees <clears throat> in there, so that's one percent. My threshold is under two percent. Is what I use. Anything over two percent, you have to act uh, right away. Um, uh, the mites, it, they carry virus, and it's the virus that uh, sickens the bees. So uh, I go yard to yard, take my samples, find out any problem yards if I have them, and I 